welcome to our global self-awakening workshop. I'm Zarathustra and broadcasting live from Los Angeles. This is our day four. I'm very excited we're together. It feels really good. I was really excited this morning. Um, it made me, I was thinking how much I love uh, giving satsangs and sharing with my brother sisters from all over the world um, this wisdom and knowledge that was transferred to me by my teachers. And uh, that was a big part of doing this originally that it's coming from gratitude of my teachers, they transferred the wisdom to me uh, through the grace of God. They found me worthy enough to bring me in and give me a transmission of this information. And this information settled uh, in me in a cellular level and of course, it's a, plant, it's a seed that you're planting and the seed needs to be cultivated and it keeps growing. It took a number of years before it really settled and it grew to the point that it started to fruit and bring me to this understanding and this level of consciousness to recognize the nature of existence. However, basically, um, what ultimately made me realize that the more I understood of the nature of the infinite, the, the source, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the more I went deeper into it, the more I realized I don't know anything. And it was every time, every moment in this self-realization process, I thought I know, or I got to a point that I told myself, oh, I figured this out. Or I made a proclamation to a friend that I got it, or I know what hide works. Guess what happened? They pulled the rug from underneath my feet and I went like, wow, you know, off balance. Making me realize that I really don't know anything. And it was very humbling. It was perfect. Because how could you know the infinite, infinite, infinity? With your mind, with your thinking mind, how would you ever know the infinite. It's basically impossible. Infinite. Think about it. Infinite. Infinity. It keeps going, 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 going from every direction. It expands from every direction. Simultaneously, it's happening. It's beyond human mind's comprehension. We only get to understand a small portion of it, very, very tiny, itty bitty, small portion of it. That's all. That's all we get to know. That's all we get to experience. A very, very tiny portion of the infinite in a very, very short period of time that you live. And the period of time you live, let's say, even if you make it to 100 years old, you still don't know anything. You're still an egg. You still don't know anything. You do experience, you live 100 years, and there's a lot of things that you experience, but in the span of the eternity, 100 millions of years or eternal, it's nothing. The period of time you were on this earth and you experienced 
whatever you did in whatever era of time, it's like a blink of eye, you know, right now, look at this. I blink my eyes. Now I'm going to do it slow motion. How many times you blink your eyes during the day? Have you ever counted? Do you count the number of times you blink your eye, your eyes? Now imagine that your existence on this planet is just a blink of, blink of eye. That's all it is. Everything you've experienced, imagine how much you've experienced, what you've gone through, how much information you received, how much wisdom you acquired. All of it is like a blink of eye. And in a way, it never happened. It never happened. And I'm going to get into that. I'm going to explain to you more in details what it means that none of this has ever happened. It simply does not happen. That we get so excited about it, we're willing to go to war and kill and defend and we carry our prejudices and everything for something that doesn't even happen. Or if it happened, it happened in a blink of an eye and then it just got lost into the eternity. We call it the history. It's very fascinating. It's mind blowing. It's so expanding. Yet it's very real in the moment when it's happening. Yet it is a re relative reality in comparison to the absolute reality. So it's very interesting in many ways because it is an enigma. It's very complex, yet it's very simple. It's right here in front of your eyes and you are part of it, yet it seemed like impossible to catch it. So it's got all these different aspects of itself simultaneously happening in this very moment. Yet the understanding can be very simple. Could be very simple. Yet, in the meantime, if you're trying to understand it with your thinking mind, it's very complex and it's almost impossible. So I decided to create a system of teaching that to keep this both verbally and practically as simple as possible. And in that, I derive teachings from all of my teachers, whether they were teaching non-duality or not, whether they were healers, shamans, uh, religious people, Sufi, Sufism and Buddhism, if they were really uh, coming from a very stiff kind of a tradition or loose, I, I felt like pulling and deriving different techniques and teacher teachings from all these different traditions that I got exposed to and to bring its essence in and make it super simple and see if I can create a situation that I can transmit this to my audience in a very simple way. We're only going to know, so far it's been very powerful, it's been very effective because thousands of people got healed or transformed, whether it was emotional healing, physical healing, or spiritual awakening. But only time will tell. At the end of my career, I can look back and see was I effective or not? Uh, what was the results? We don't know yet. We have to wait to, to all the way to the end and then we'll find out.
Maybe it was a total waste of time. Who knows? Maybe not. So I welcome you all on this platform, whether you're with us on the Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. I welcome you with all my heart and I find it my duty that I also share with you and give you what I got from these beautiful, awakened, enlightened beings from that shine their grace on me. And I don't know if I did anything to deserve it because I have no recollection of my past doings. But somehow, through the grace, I happen to be there and I received it. So I can't even give myself any credit that I did something good in the past and I got this. It just happened. So for the moment, why don't we just sink inside ourselves and to make it easier for you, why don't we do this to give you an idea just to change things. And imagine that you're walking on a beach. It's white sand beaches. Close your eyes, take a deep breath. And you're walking on this beautiful white sand beach. You're looking at the water and the water is turquoise. It's beautiful, it's flat, it's calm. Nothing's happening, it's just very relaxed. Tranquilo, super easy, simple. There's a platform, there's like a marina, and then you're walking on the deck of the marina, and you're walking and you come walk to a boat. It's a nice sailboat. It's beautiful. It's simple. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining on your face. You can hear the seagulls flying and you can hear them singing. You go and sit in the boat. You find a place. You're just sitting very comfortably facing the sun. And the sailboat starts to move and it's taking you in the middle of the ocean. It's turquoise, beautiful, vibrant day, and the water is really yummy. It's clear, it's clean, flat, no waves, but a nice breeze. And you're traveling towards the sun. You're going towards the light. The sailboat picks up speed. You can feel the wind touching your face. Your hair is flying in the air. You feel very good. You have the powerful sun rays on your face, yet in the same time you have this very nice breeze that is keeping you cool. Your body is very happy, it's very comfortable. You're sitting or lying on a nice comfortable chair or bed. You're alone by yourself. The boat is on autopilot. Pilot. The entire nature is very happy. 
The ocean is smiling at you and is welcoming you and taking you in deep, deeper. You're going deep into the depth of the ocean. By now, you're very far away from the beach and the beach starting to disappear. You have no fear, though. You feel very comfortable, very protected, very much loved. It's absolutely silent, except the breeze that you feel on your face. And occasionally you're hearing a little bit of the boat sailing on the ocean. But other than that, there's no other noises. Your mind is quiet. As you're traveling, you can feel that the breeze, the air is traveling through your body. It's going through your head. As if your body has created microscopic holes in it. And the air can travel through your body, to your head, to your mind. And it's cleansing, it's clearing, it's taking all your memories away, it's taking all the shadow away, all the dark side, taking all the blockages. Everything is being taken away, getting cleaned up, getting freshened up. Complete cleansing. You sink into this very deep silence. Your heart begins to open and you feel the love. You feel the love of God in your heart. The love of self. You feel the presence, the presence of the being. God is here. God is touching you. God is kissing you, is hugging you. Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, she's dancing around you. She's playing around you. She's singing. To you. She touches your lips. You don't know if she's inside or outside. She's hovering all over you. You feel very safe very taken care of. You feel deep love. The love gets stronger and stronger. You feel the sunshine on your face and you feel the sun is shining from your heart as well. You begin to feel that your body is dissolving into the armchair, the bed, the ch chair that you're sitting on. You can't tell the difference between the chair and your body. An expansion is taking place. You're expanding into the boat you're becoming the sailboat. You're expanding so rapidly. Dissolving into this presence of the being, this power, this moment, pure love, no judgment, no thoughts, 
It's only the being and nothing else. It's light and it's power expanding and getting more powerful. It's very quickly expanding and it's taken over the sailboat. So now you don't know if you have a body, you're sitting on a chair, lying down, whether you're the boat, You've lost all senses of borderies, borders, no idea, what, what am I, who am I? You're expanding further. Now you're also the ocean. You're the boat, your body, your chair, the, the ocean, everything's become one. You're in deep silence and gratitude. You feel the presence. You are the presence. A total expansion. It feels as if the molecules of your body, every atom, every cell has dissolved into the sun, into the ocean. The expansion continues. Now you feel like you're the air. You're one with the air and you become one with the sunshine. So now there is a total unification of the sunshine, the sun, the air, the water, the boat, your body. Everything's become one. Everything has mashed into one being. It's like mashed potato. There's no definition anymore. You can't decide or choose, or distinguish which one you are. In this moment, in this unification, in this love, peace that you experience of the oneness, that you are one, that there is no separation. In the midst of being in this place, it comes a question, rises a thought. And the question is, who am I? The question arises three times. Second time, the question arises again. Who am I? And you can't answer it because you no longer know if you're your body, if you are the chair or the bed, you're lying down facing the sun. Am I the boat? Am I the ocean? Am I the sunshine? Am I the breeze? Your mind cannot distinguish any of it. Your mind actually gives up and surrenders and falls into the heart, into the heart of awareness. And the question comes back one more time, who am I?
the question dissolves into itself. It is as if a phenomena, an anomaly happened, something expressed itself and it just went back to its source. You can't answer that question in this moment because you're completely gone, one with everything. There is nothing there. Yet it's everything. Everything has dissolved into the oneness to nothing and nothing has arrived to everything. And you are that. Yet here. Yet present. Yet in a state of bliss. Who am I? To whom do I appear? At the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul. At the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being the Supreme Soul. Who am I? At the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the warrior of light comes to face to face with her maker. But when you come to the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme, you can't look at the presence because it's light will blind you. It's too powerful. It's too big. It's too illuminous. But the warrior of light comes to the presence. In the middle of nowhere, it comes face to face with its maker. 
the warrior of light, the warrior, the spiritual warrior later on gives a report, writes a poetry. It says the unbearable force of love in the magnitude of her presence, this humble warrior of light bows at the feet of her majesty, Lord God. The warrior of light bows at the presence because the presence is so huge. It's unbearable. Says the warrior of light, I surrender to you, my Lord. Take me, break me, remake me, then impregnate me so I can bear your love. Take me. Break me, remake me, then impregnant me so I can bear your love. Unconditional surrender to the force of love. Surrendering completely to the maker. Let her carry you. Let her take you home. Give up the struggle and the suffering will disappear with it. You suffer because you resist. If there is no resistance to what is, there is no suffering. You suffer because you think it should be different than what is. You suffer because you don't really feel the presence of God in every moment of your life. The connection comes and goes, it's not consistent. So suffering comes in. But if you recognize that the presence is here in your heart all the time, continuously. The power and the love and the light of the presence illuminates all sufferings. Acceptance and gratitude will take place. Peace comes after that.
slowly come back. From Lightning Notes of Zarathustra, page number 90. I want to read something to you. Surrendering free will. One day, Her Majesty Lord God told me, Zarathustra, surrender your free will to me and you will instantly be free. I told God, I'm really scared to do this. If I let go of my free will, how am I going to take care of my responsibilities? Who's going to pay my bills? God answered, by surrendering your free will to me, from this moment on, all your thoughts, actions, and speech will be mine. You will merely be a conduit, and you will forever be free from the whole, from the will of karma. I thought that was a good deal, so I did it. I surrendered my free will to God, and as a result, I immediately became free. Surrendering to the Force. Surrendering to this. You can't do it by the mind if you're not feeling it. So when you sink into your heart and you come here into this moment, into this, into the presence here, so you shift from your head to your heart and you're here and you start to feel the presence, the being. Feeling the being here. No mind activities. Simply being here. Or being transported back into the sailboat. And use the power of your imagination To come back on your sailboat, sitting there, receiving the sun rays, happy, warm, with a cool breeze, and completely illuminated into the oneness. No ideas, no agendas, nowhere to go, nothing to prove, nothing to do. Simply here in this moment, completely dissolved into the oneness, in complete bliss, the bliss, the presence of God. Completely in gratitude.
silent mind, quiet here, not going anywhere, not identifying with the pendulum, the pendulum of life. Things go your way, you're really happy. Things don't go your way, you're miserable. So it's the yo-yo. You go up, you go down, you go up, you go down. You try to manipulate things to go your way and they don't go your way and you suffer. You try to manipulate people to do what they wa you want them to do. How about just be completely indifferent? Practicing being indifferent yet really present and enjoying this moment of life completely without an agenda, without any kind of attachments to the outcome, that things should go this way or that way. Just be completely detached from the outcomes. Just be here, completely immersed in the being completely in love with the self, the being, the presence of God that you feel in your heart. In this moment, you put your stories away. Whatever is your story, we're not interested in your story in this moment. Put your story away. Your story stinks. It's rotten. It smells like shit. It's a story. Nobody cares about it. You're the only one who carries this story in your garbage bag. And you've been carrying it for a number of years. And you're so attached to it that it's become real. But it doesn't even exist anymore. It's a non-existing story. Why not be here and drink from this fountain of now, here, right now? Even in the next 10 minutes, they're going to take you and execute you. So you only have 10 minutes left in your life. Why not be here right now and drink this, the drink from this fountain? of love, of divine love. Why miss this? Missing it. You've miss it, missed it all of your life. It's time to stop missing it and really dive into it. Here, right now. The opportunity of recognition, of realizing who you really are. It's right in front of you. It's presented in front of you in this moment. Why miss it? Why not dive into it? But for that, you have to put your story away. You can go to your story, but I da 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 da. But I don't know, ba 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 ba. But he doesn't call me all the time. He doesn't love me, or blah 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 blah. That's a story. Put the story away, and look here, and really see who you are. Discover who you are, and discover your power. Discover how amazing it is to be here with the Holy Self, with Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, that you're actually complete, that you don't need anyone to confirm that for you or to add to it or take away from it. Everything you're looking for is already here within yourself. It's not anywhere else. You don't need to go anywhere. 
and you don't need to do anything for it. You already have it within yourself. It's here right now. All you have to do is look inside and put your addictions away, your addiction to your story, your addiction to your past. Whatever it is, no matter how great it sounds, how dramatic it is, how much you think you're entitled to it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't serve you any longer, not here. Here, you encounter the biggest diamond ever existed anywhere in the world, right here in your heart. And that's you, the truth of who you are, the presence. Bingo. But for that, you just have to go beyond your mind because you can't carry, the mind carries the garbage bag of your past, of your story. You got to let that one go. By recognizing it, that's the sister's story. That's all it is. by recognizing your fears, your worries, your anxieties, by recognizing that your mind is conditioned, it's formed, it's brainwashed, it's attached to the past and to the future. And in some way, it doesn't even exist. It's non-existing. An attachment to something that doesn't exist. Because your past doesn't even exist. Your past is only in your mind. That's all it is. And your mind is not accurate anymore. So you don't really remember your past that well. You just have an idea of it. And your suffering referring to an idea of a past or you're using the past and projecting it into the future. It's a projection of your mind into the future that's non-existing again. So I want you to sink into this moment for a few minutes. Close your eyes and sink into your heart and hang out with this person, hang out with their majesty, hang out with the being. Even if you wanna use your hands and bring them close to your chest area without touching your chest and just feel the presence. You can feel there's an energetic field around you of the presence of a being already hugging you and holding you. Hang in there, just sink inside, connect to the source of yourself, the presence, your heartbeat, the being, Her Majesty, Lord God, the presence, connect to that. Yeah, get used to hanging out with the self, with Her Majesty, with your being. Make that a practice. Take time off, time out, time off during the day, 
every day and spend time with the self, with yourself. Reconnect to the being and remember through that that you are the one you're looking for. The one you're looking from is the one you're looking for. What you're looking for is not outside of yourself. It's right here. For that, the requirement is to be quiet, to be silent. And as you're silent, the transformation from the head takes place to the heart. You sink into the heart and you recognize the being, the power of the being. The more you hang out with the being and you recognize yourself, the less you fear, worry, or anxiety, the unknowns, because you discovered God inside yourself. And its power and magnitude is beyond anything else. Everything else in the world will come and bow at your presence. Anybody has any questions? Is our chat box open, Amir, or no? We're gonna open the chat box if you wanna write there. If you have a question or wanna wave at me. Some of you, I know your cameras are off, so if you have a question, you need to write to me or wave at me. No questions. Can you hear me? Is my voice, can you hear me? Yeah, good, okay. And Okay, let me tell you why your story doesn't exist and it's irrelevant. We go through our life, our lives thinking that time is and our life, the moments are connected to each other. So it's running through a horizontal line so it is the past, it is the present, it's in the future. So something is moving in that direction. That's what it seems to be. It looks like it. But that's an optical illusion. The moments of life are not connected to each other. There's absolutely no connection between last second and this second. They're not connected to each other at all. The moments of life, they're vertical. They're vertical moments. So each moment happens, tack, then the next moment, tack, it's finished. Then the next moment, the next moment, the next moment. Like when you're playing piano. The chips are not connected to each other. There's a gap in between. When you're playing piano, the keyboards, that's the correct word for it, they're not attached to each other. They're next to each other, but they're not attached to each other. There's a hairline of separation in between them, the keyboards of the piano. 
even the keyboards on your computer, they're not attached to each other. Each A, B, C, D, whatever you're going through, they're not connected to each other. So same thing is the moments of life, they're not connected to each other. Each moment happens in here and now, and it's completely disconnected from the previous moment and the future moment. And each moment only happens once, only one time in the entire existence of, of humanity. This moment is the only time it happens, and then it's gone forever. So where is it now? Where is last moment? Where is a minute ago? Where, where do you find it? Yes, we are videoing this. And of course, you can come and refer to the video. But in life, when you're living your life, you're not videoing every moment of your life. So where are those moments? Where is this morning when you woke up and you got out of the bed, you made your tea, coffee, you went and showered, you got ready and did everything. Where is that? Where are those moments? Where did they go? Is there a record of it? Can you re rewind the tape and go back and watch it? It only is in your memory. That's all there is. Same as your past. Everything that has happened in your past it's only in your memory and you don't even have a complete recording of it. You remember some parts of it. Do you remember what you had for lunch last week? What did you eat for lunch last week on Thursday? You don't remember it. Do you know what you did last Thursday? Unless it's a significant event, you don't even remember what you did last week on Thursday. You may not even remember what you did yesterday. So if you go back and look at your past, you only remember a small portion of what has happened that it's still in your memory. So there is no record of it. It not, it's, it hasn't been videotaped. It hasn't been recorded. Yes, I know you can come and say, well, it's in the Akasha records, but I understand that, but you don't have access to it. It's not like you put a disc into your computer and you can watch the DVD of it whatever it is, the video, the DVD, the tape. So where, where is your past? Where is your past? This past that you're very attached to and you get very excited about it, you cry about it, you get prejudice about it, you got get very gone ho where, where is it? Or even the past of your country, where is the history? Where is any of it? 100 years ago, what happened 100 years ago? You don't know what happened 100 years ago, you don't have a clue. You weren't here 100 years ago. What you know is what you read from the books or videos or whatever of 100 years ago. But you don't know if it's true or not. You don't know if it's fabricated or not. Or 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago. None of it you know anything about except what evidence is being presented to you today from the past. But you don't know if it's true or not. You're only trusting that is true, but you have no idea. This is not your direct experience. You don't know if it's real or not. But you're very gone ho about it. You're really willing to fight for, for this. 
for your past, for your country, for your ideas, for your prejudice, whatever that is, that it is like that, but you don't know. Because you can't really remember your own past. Yet, you put it in this garbage bag and you keep carrying it with you from one relationship to another relationship, from one transaction to the next transaction. But you can't even remember it very well anymore. It's gone. Do you see what I'm talking about? Can you just, with open mind, look back and examine the validity of your past, whether it's real or not? Did it really happen? Does it exist? Did, I, did this things really happen to me? How come I don't have a record of it except in my memory? And my memory is not playing very well. It's playing a trick on me. Get together with two or three of your high school friends or college friends, something from 10, 20 years ago. Sit down and talk about the things you used to do. Let's say, you know, four, four ladies get together. They used to be good college friends or high school friends, and you come together with your friends and you start talking about the past. Each of you have a different story. None of the story is going to be the same. Everybody has a different story of the events that happened. That you used to go to the parties, you went da 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 da, you did this, you did that, and everybody has their own version of a story. None of them are matching. So whose story is right? Check it out for yourself. Get together with one of your old friends, talk about old memories, and see if you have the identical story. And I guarantee you, you don't. Barely you have the identical story. Everybody has a different version. Everybody remembers it differently. So which one is the right story? Check it out. Don't take my word for it. Examine it for yourself. you will discover that you don't really remember so much of your past. You can say, well, I blocked it off or whatever. Unconsciously, it's so painful. I don't want to go there and I blocked it off. Whatever, whether you did or it happened or your subconscious blocked it, it doesn't matter. But did it really happen? And where is it? So what I'm pointing out and what I'm trying to share with you is that this is a part of your work. You want to be free. You want to be free. You want to be here. You want to be at the company of the presence and be illuminated and become one with what is to dive into the oneness, to raise your consciousness Ascending your consciousness to fifth dimensional consciousness. Then you can't take that garbage bag with you to where you're going. You're going to let go of that garbage bag. You need to be reborn. You have to be new.
because when you come here and you're hanging out with the, your being in the presence, all of these other things, they're irrelevant. Your past is irrelevant and what's going to happen to me in the future becomes irrelevant. Because here is the only moment there is. It's always here. It's always now. It's not anywhere else. It can be anywhere else. Here and now is the only moment you and I have. That's the only moment we're ever going to get. And it's always fresh because now is not connected to a moment ago. They're vertical moments. They're not attached to each other. Each moment happens and it's gone forever. And a brand new moment happens and it's gone forever. So it's always this fresh moment is happening in life. They're not attached to each other. If they were attached to each other, you could go back and forth. But they're not attached to each other. They're disconnected. So each moment in life happens once and it's over. And it never happens again. Not that moment. And it's gone forever. Finished. Non-existing. And all your future moments, non-existing. It's just a, projecting, a projection of your mind into the future. Because future doesn't exist. There is not, not such a thing as future. It's always now. Because that's the only thing exists. Now is the only thing that exists. Now is the only thing ever existed. There is nothing outside of now. So you want to go to your past and bring the garbage bag and your problems or issues or whatever that you're imagining you have and bring them into this moment. You're going to go there and grab that garbage bag and come and dump it on yourself here and then suffer. So you're addicted to that. You have an addiction to it like a heroin addict, like an alcoholic. It's an addiction. It's a sickness. You think addicted people are people who are addicted to alcohol or drugs or pills. You don't know you have an addiction yourself. You're deeply addicted to your garbage bag, your past. <clears throat> and you're willing to protect it by all means. And this addiction expands into the future. It's an unconscious imprint. It's, a, it's an unconscious addiction that you're not, no one's aware of it. Nobody has ever told you that. So you don't know it. It's normal. Everybody else does it. Your girlfriends, your, fr your friends doing it. So you sit down with each other and start having some tea and eat some ice cream and you cry about your past or whatever, and everybody else is just supporting you. A bunch of addicted people supporting an addiction. And we're not even aware of it. And we do it all of our lives. And then we die and we come back and do it again. And then in the meantime, you're trying to free yourself. You want freedom, but you're not aware of your addiction because how can you be free if you're carrying your past into your present how can you be free you can never be free you're already set up for failure it doesn't matter what you do you are bound to fail because it's impossible you can't fly you can't fly high if you have 100 kilos of weight on your shoulders. You cannot fly. You can't jump. Gravity is going to pull you back. 
So you got to get rid of this shit that you're carrying. And sometimes for that, you need the witch doctor. You need help with someone, something that recognizes that and wakes you up, is shaking you, slapping you in your face a couple of times. Wake up. So you, oh, what's going on? You just slapped me in my face. You just shook me. You just kicked me in my ass. What, what, what's going on? Wake up. Wake up and see what you're doing. Yes, Rosalie. Yeah. It's many times when things happen, you let it go. But so can things happen again and it's coming back as a tsunami on you. And Okay, what's your question? That's when you let things go. It's not that you go and carry it in the garbage on, the, on your back on you, but you let it go. But so the same thing happen again or something similar. And then all coming back like a garbage, uh, garbage over you, like a tsunami. Well, you just experience it in a moment every time it happens and you move on. Every time it's going to be fresh because now here is always fresh. It doesn't repeat itself. Yeah, but because I let it go. Not that I accept what's happened, but I get peace in my mind. Okay. But I see that the many things that's coming back again when when it's happened and then it's coming as a tsunami. Yeah. Sometimes it happens many times. Yeah. So you use it as an opportunity that existence is teaching you to simply be here now, experience it in the moment things happen. It may happen a hundred times. Yeah, and I let it go, just that, not that I accept it, but I like to have peace of mind for myself. Yeah. yeah, you let it go. <clears throat> if you implement this way of being, if you implement it in your daily ritual exercise of shifting your consciousness, shifting your awareness, of dwelling in the past and you train yourself to be here and you deal with whatever is here right now. You deal with it, whatever that is. It's an emotional issue. Something has hurt you, something bothers you. Whatever that is that you want to cry, you cry. You feel jealous, you feel jealous. You're angry, you be angry. You're an instrument of expressing yourself. It's an instrument. It's a mechanism to experience things in this moment. You experience it in this moment. And then it's gone. You don't dwell on it. And the next thing comes. And the next thing comes. And the next thing comes. You keep experiencing whatever it comes in the moment and you deal with it in a moment. You express it, you feel it, whatever that is. You get sad, you get angry, you get happy, you get horny, you get excited, you get everything, whatever. But you don't put it in a garbage bag and keep carrying it with you. It's all fresh. It's all the first time is happening. The more your attention comes into here and you get focused on the being in here right now, in this moment, the more you start to realize 
and experience that everything is always fresh. Everything is only happening one time in your life. The mind would like to go and categorize these things. The mind tendency is to attach it to a past event. That's what the mind does because it simply cannot be here. It's got a hard time being here. It's a training. It's a shift. It's a journey from the head to the heart. And nobody said it's going to be easy, but it's work because we have to undo our conditioning. We've been conditioned. The mind's conditioned. You have to understand you're having this mind which is prejudice. It's got a lot of judgments in it. It's been formed to think like your parents, but your parents are from two generations ago, one generation ago, they're old, or old way of thinking, whatever it is, and you're carrying this mind that's got residues, conditioned residues from your parents, from the country you grew up, whatever is the theme of the country. It's a religious, conditioning, all of this stuff is in here in your mind. It's conditioned. It's brainwashed. It's set in this way. Now you're undoing this by self-awareness, self-awakening. So your attention is turning inwards. You're starting to look at yourself. You're watching, you're observing yourself, self-awakening. That's why they call it that. You are becoming aware and awake of yourself. So it means you need to look at these things to become aware of these conditioning, of these habits, of these addictions, all these ideas. All of the ideas, even the idea that I'm going to find my soulmate and we're going to be together happily thereafter till the end of our lives. That's also a concept. It's an idea. It's been implanted in our minds from childhood that you're going to find your mate and you're going to be with them till the end of the life. Who said that? Based on what? Who said that's what God, life is going to be? And you're supposed to find your soulmate and stay with him all the way to the end of life. Where is it written? When you were born, did, was it written on your forehead? Did you come with a manual in your hand that that's how life is supposed to be? Maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't. For some people, it does. For majority of people on the planet, it doesn't happen. You're never going to be with your partner. You're never going to find your partner. Maybe find it for a month, two, two years, five years, ten years, and then it comes and it disappears. Nobody guaranteed that. It's an idea you're carrying in your head. So when the picture of your life is not matching that idea that you have in your, your head that I have to have my love, my twin flame, my love, and it's not matching to this idea, you suffer. Because the picture of what you're experiencing is different than what you think you should be experiencing. Because Hollywood is producing all these movies of happy ending, of you find the two found each other and they lived happily thereafter. But in the actual life, you don't really find that. Marriages fall apart. Partners, they hate each other. After two, three years, they don't want to have sex with each other anymore. They're not excited about each other. They're lying. They're lying to themselves. They're lying to each other. 
the actual picture that you're experiencing in this life is very different than the idea that you have how things should be. They're very different. And that causes suffering because your mind is conditioned that things should be this way. And life doesn't really give a hood of what you think life should be like. Excuse my language. Life doesn't give a shit what you think how it should be. Life will do what it wants to do. Whatever it wants to do, it will do. It will create incredible beaches, white sand beaches, beautiful water, it's turquoise, it's gorgeous, it's pristine, it's very pretty, it's surreal. Then same life will create an oil company. Two miles down in the ocean, the oil company will come and starts drilling and put this platform in this beautiful pristine turquoise water and contaminate the ocean and kill all the fish and the coral and the seaweed and destroy the beach. And while you're really angry and you're screaming and you just want to kill, and this happened and you're pointing your finger at this evil corporation for doing it, it all was supported by life because life doesn't care what you're thinking, how it should perform or be. Life in this moment is going to be what it wants to be. It's an expression of the absolute and it doesn't care what you think about it. Get used to it, recognize that. Acceptance of what is. All of it are supported by life. Donald Trump, the opposition, the deep state, the Illuminati, the bad guys, the good guys, the evil corporations, the pharmaceutical corporations, the, the oil corporations, the Bill Gates, all of these blah, 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 good, bad, evil are all supported by life. Life has created them. Life has created you and I. Life is supporting us, supporting all lives, all life across the universe. It's all created by the one. And the one doesn't care what do you think. So do yourself a favor. Surrender to the will of the Allah. Surrender to the will of God. And then you stop suffering. Everything becomes very easy. In comparison, than trying to implement your ideas of how things should be. God doesn't know what God is doing because God is the creator of universe and you've only been here for 50 years and all of a sudden you know how things should be. And you're really gung-ho about it. You want to co-create with God. God doesn't need your co-creations. Thank you. Just mind your own business. Learn one thing in this life. Be quiet. And speaking of be quiet, look what life did. Look what they've done to us. They created the mask. So now you have to have this mask in front of your face. What does it rep represent? It represents, it says, shut up and don't speak. Be quiet. It's so clear. Can't you see that? It goes with the message. Be quiet. Be silent. Be still. And what did they do? They mask your face. 
be quiet, be still. I'm not talking about to them saying be quiet. I'm talking about to spiritually be quiet. And look what is going on in the world. You're forced to be in a quarantine. And right now we're getting a break. We're going to be out there for a month or two. And then September comes. The second wave is going to come. And you're forced to go back to your cells. Go back to your jail, your cell. Go back into the monastery. Be quiet and go in there and meditate. It's, gonna, it's coming. It, well, it's happening. So it's divine intervention. The big kahuna stepped in and said, you know what? Enough of enough of this bullshit. Now it's mandatory meditation. So the more you dive into yourself, the more you sink inside yourself and just go back into the meditation, the, le the less you're resisting, the easier it's for your own involvement. It's easier for you. Of course you can resist and do whatever you want to do and keep banging your head against the wall. You're the only one who suffers because nobody else gives a shit. Our process is individual. We all are looking at this, what's in it for me? That's all you care about. What's in it for me? Am I going to be happy? Am I going to be okay? Is this teachings helping me? Is this serving me? It's only you. Because you're the one who's suffering. You're the one who's seeking. You're the one looking for a remedy. And you can't help anybody else as much as you claim you want to because you don't know how to help yourself. You have to help yourself first. You have to eliminate suffering. And by eliminating suffering, because you think you have to manipulate the other elements, things have to go your way so you don't suffer. But that's impossible because you tried it all of your life. And you couldn't do it. Things don't go your way. Things go their way. So your methods and techniques are futile. Whatever you're trying to do is not working. It hasn't worked. So it's time to wake up and take a look at yourself. Maybe my method is wrong. So what should I do? because I'm still suffering. So I can't make things in the utter world to go my way. So what should I do? Maybe I should change something inside myself. Maybe it's time for that. What do I change inside myself so I don't suffer? Well, why don't we start with the very basic thing? Who are you? And who is suffering? Let's start with A, B, C, D. Who are you? Who is this person in there who's suffering? Let's examine that one first. Ask yourself that question. Contemplate on it. Sit with yourself in silence. Honestly, who am I really? Dig deep into this. Examine who is this person that I call Zarathustra, I call Jane, I call Marit, I call Joe, I call John. Who is suffering? Who is this person? Examine that. Don't just hear it from this place and let it go from this ear. Dive into this because it's significant. It's important. That's why we're here.
Don't just look for an easy way out. Dive into it. Examine it. Something very valuable is here right now. We're facing something really life-changing. We got this opportunity right now presented to us. It's very unique. It's divine intervention that the God came and stopped the world and is forcing us to look inside. It can't be any more significant than what it is right now. Why not take advantage of it? Why not go for it? Because you can't really go out there and do a lot of things. You can't go travel. A lot of us can't go out there and work. Your businesses are shut down. A lot of people get getting government assistance or whatever. It's a little bit, but whatever it is, it is a perfect opportunity to go inside, to dig in and to root out the cause of your suffering because that's what it all boils down to. Why am I suffering? Why am I going through all these ups and downs? What can I do to free myself? I don't know. I need help. Can somebody help me? Zaratustra, can you help me? Yes, I can help you. But I can't do it for you. I can just point you out in the right direction because I've gone through it myself. But you have to do it. You have to look at yourself. And yes, it's a little bit scary because when you're looking at yourself, you also have to look at the shit that is in there. And most of us don't want to do it. We want to brush over it and jump into another thing. But it's worth it, my brothers and sisters. It's worth it. And I'm here with you. We're together. We're all together in it. You're not alone. And there is help here. Physical help. Physical beings. Many different beautiful teachers are out there, a lot of books, a lot of information. And there is the angelic realm, which is here. There is help. And we're all in it together. So why not go for it? Let's do it. Because we have nothing to lose. and everything to gain. Nothing to lose and everything to gain. Because if you succeed in this life, then you have eliminated suffering And you will succeed. If you pay attention. Pay attention. Why is this pandemic happen? Why am I here? What is the teachings in this moment? What is it that I'm supposed to be learning? I'm paying attention. I'm not putting my attention that, oh, I really want to find my love of life and I really want to have two kids and I really want more money or I want to travel. Then your attention went somewhere else. Now you're looking for 
utter happiness. You're looking for satisfaction from getting married or having kids or getting more money or traveling. So you're missing the boat again. I'm not saying those things aren't good. They're not. I'm just saying pay attention. Bring your attention here inwards. Because those things, you're going to get them and you're happy for a short period of time and then there's going to bring misery because you haven't done the work. You haven't found it inside yourself. So you want to run and get it from the outside. When I pay, pay attention, that's what I mean. Don't fall asleep. Oh, if I buy this other house or if I get more money and if I have my retirement set or if I blah, 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 everything's going to be fine. No, it doesn't work that way because it's not coming from the outside. It's coming from within yourself. You have to find it inside yourself, sweetheart. That's where it is. And I'm here to help you with it. If you want my help. And I don't have all the answers. And I don't know everything. And I make mistakes. And I have my flaws. <laughs> but I'll do the best I can. I can't promise anything, but I'll do the best I can. Thank you. Just hang in there. Just be patient. Don't lose your patience. Be honest with yourself. Be quiet. And bring your attention to the observer, the one who's observing everything, not what you're observing. Don't get so gun ho about what is going on in the world, what is going on in your mind or your emotions. Kind of bring your attention away. Disconnect from it. Very simple language. Disconnect from the world outside of yourself and bring your attention inwards. And I'm not saying you get focused on your feelings that, oh, what do I, why am I feeling this? Why am I feeling that? La, 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 because that's another addiction. You can get hung up on that one very easily. Bring your attention. Go beyond the feelings, beyond the thoughts, and hang out in the silence. 
Hang out in the silence. Hang out with the majesty. Hang out with this one. This one is crying to get your attention, is dying to get your attention. He's really calling you home. And don't worry about how things are going to work out for you. That's not your business. Don't worry how things are going to work out. You just keep doing this. That's all you have to do. That's the way I'm telling you. That's the way you get to it. Just hang out here. Be quiet. Everything will happen automatically. Everything will come together. The force will take care of everything for you. Everything will come together. You don't have to worry about it. Don't worry about how the world is going to carry itself, what's going to happen to the pandemic, what's going to happen to the economy. Don't worry about any of it. You just be quiet. You're in a monastery. Your job is to be quiet. Just be quiet. Be in silence. Practice that. I'm not saying be boring. I'm not saying be depressed. Oh my God, it gets so depressing because all I do is I'm silent. No. Go dance. Go have fun. Go drive. Make love. Jump up and down. Laugh. Cry. Do whatever you have to do. Being silent doesn't mean being depressed. Being silent doesn't mean life is going to be dull. Oh my God, this is so boring. No, you're silent inside. You're not engaged with the utter world. And you're not engaged with your thoughts or your emotions. You're simply, your focus is on the observer. You're being quiet inside. And then everything comes together. Everything falls into places. And try to avoid jumping from one teaching to another teaching. Stick to one teaching. Choose one teaching that works for you. Stick to it for a year. Till it doesn't feel right. Don't jump on this one and that one. All it does is creates confusion for you because there's so much out there it's very confusing everybody's got a different thing and you want to do a little bit of this a little bit of that it's not going to help you stick to one thing stick to it do that thing and see where it goes where it takes you if you don't get result after six months or a year then jump onto something else but don't run around doing a million different things. It's not going to do you any good. Stick to one thing. And be patient. Don't expect immediate gratification. But the angelic realms will make itself known to you. They will show their presence to you because you have the desire for freedom. You want love. You want to come home. And they're just pulling you in. So they're here with you. You're not left out. No matter how lonely you may feel at times and how much you feel like no one understands you, don't get fooled by that. You're very well protected and taken care of. You got beings hovering all around you, looking for, looking after you. You're not alone on this thing. This is not a lonesome thing that you have to do it on your own. There are forces around you that are guiding you. Just trust the process and be patient. Our next meeting is going to be this coming weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 
we're broadcasting at 9.30 Los Angeles time, Pacific Standard Time. It's going to be 12.30 in the East Coast of the U.S. and 18.30, 6.30 p.m. in Europe. We're using the Zoom, and you can go on my website, zaratustra.tv, go to the calendar of events, and click on the uh, event for coming Saturday. If you want to register, you just go to the registration, you register there, you get a passcode on Zoom, and you can come on our system, and we can interact with each other or you can watch this broadcast on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and we're broadcasting simultaneously on all these channels. If you have any comments you want to write to me, you're welcome to, either on my Facebook pages, Zaratustra 5D, or um, send us an email info at zaratustra.tv. Uh, thank you again. I really appreciate for your donations. Thank you for your love. Really, it's heartwarming. I know that you're there. You're supporting us. I'm very grateful. Um, I will write back to each and every one of you uh, in person. We've just been a little bit busy, but I'll write back to you and thank you personally for the love and support and your uh, generous donations. We are a small enterprise and uh, we appreciate your support. And we're gonna continue, we're not going anywhere. It's God who wants us to keep doing it and we're keep doing it and we keep broadcasting and making this available for everyone. Those of you who registered, registered through our uh, Zoom, uh, through our website, we have your emails and we're gonna send you a copy of this broadcast. You can also find it on YouTube and uh, the recording on IGTV, on Instagram, and on Facebook. So it's there. If you want to listen to it, uh, watch it again, go ahead, and you can find it on one of these channels. We're also going to send you some more uh, meditations that we have created. Uh, these are free gifts uh, next week in the next 10 days when uh, we have more time, room to breathe, we will provide you with more guided meditations and send them to you. Some of you have been uh, purchasing some of my products from the product uh, section on my website. I've been getting a few emails from you that you weren't able to open up the links. Uh, we're looking into it. Amir is on top of everything. So I appreciate your communicating with us. And, uh, and Amir is here to help you. He's just a wonderful human being, a gentleman. He's taking care of all of our technical supports and uh, administration work. And I have to say, this is a blessing to have Amir in the team. Uh, he's behind the cameras, behind the scene, but he takes care of everything and I'm very, very grateful to him. So if you do buy a product and you can't open up the link, uh, just write back to us and we'll fix it for you. I'm also going to have a workshop. It's called Ascension to Fifth Dimension. And this workshop is going to be towards the end of July. Um, I think it's July, 20, July 25th and 26th. So 
it's on our website. You can you can sign up uh, if you wish. Uh, prior to that, we're going to have a shamanic healing event, and that's going to be on Thursday, the 23rd and 25th and 26th. We're going to have the workshop. It's a continuation of what we're doing here. Nothing is happening in the center of yourself. It's very quiet. It's very still. This is all God's dream. It's just a show. Nothing to be afraid of. Stay in your center and connect to your own being and you will see that all is well and everything is taken care of. There is nothing to be afraid of, nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. You are 100% taken care of. Everything is going to be all right. It's not going to be the way you want it to be, but it's all going to be fine. And you will be taken care of in this process. Just connect to your desire for freedom, desire for love, desire for God, desire for freedom. Just connect to that desire. And the source, the majesty, the supreme will guide you, will guide you home. Don't, you don't need to worry. You're very well taken care of. All is well. The Supreme Being who has created the creator of this creation knows exactly what she's doing. And she's going to guide you home. You don't need to worry about it. Namaste.